Besides the whole bunch of types of numbers, there is complex number. It's called complex due to the combination of real and imaginary numbers. Welcome to Mathematics of Engineering. Having to combine a real number and imaginary number is basically just to place them together by an operator. From the example, the first part is the real number, and the succeeding part is the imaginary, easily observed because of i. If you are wondering what i is, or what is it equal to, i stands for imaginary or unreal. i is equal to the square root of negative 1, whereby from earlier maths, we have learned that there is no square root of a negative number. i squared is like the square of the root of negative 1, which turns into negative 1. i cubed is expanded as multiplying the square root of negative 1 by itself three times, where we can take a pair out of the radical and make it as negative 1, then turning the whole i cubed as negative i. Similarly, i raised to 4 is then negative 1 times negative 1 or positive 1. In numerical figures, let's see how to inject i into the examples. First is the square root of negative 25, which can be written as the square root of 25 times negative 1, and by doing so, we can extract 25 out of the radical as 5. Then remember that the root of negative 1 can be written as i. So the square root of negative 25 is 5i. For the second example, the square root of negative 50 can then be expanded as the root of 25 times 2 times negative 1. Again, take out 25 from the radical and have 5 times the square root of 2 times negative 1, where again, the root of negative 1 is i. So the final form is 5i with the root of 2. A basic operation of complex numbers is the conjugate. This focuses on only the imaginary number and the procedure is just switching the signs. From the model a plus b times i, it has the conjugate a minus b times i. To show this in some examples, check out the three cases. The conjugate of the complex number 3 minus 5i is 3 plus 5i. The conjugate of an imaginary number 2i is similar as writing it as 0 plus 2i, and its conjugate is 0 minus 2i, which is the same as simply negative 2i. The conjugate of a real number 5 is just the same as number 5. This is a real number which is not affected by the conjugate. The first basic operations of complex numbers are addition and subtraction. The main rule for these operations is to add or subtract similar terms, that is group all real numbers and do the same for all imaginary numbers. First example is to add 4 plus 3i with 1 minus 6i. If they are placed vertically, real numbers 4 and 1 add up to 5 and the imaginary numbers 3i and negative 6i become negative 3i. Say there are 2 plus 4i added to 5 minus 3i minus 3 plus i, then add 6 and subtract 5i. Placing them vertically makes it easier to add the real numbers 2 plus 5 plus negative 3 plus 6 as equal to 10. The imaginary numbers are also added as 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 3 with i as equal to negative 3i. The multiplication of complex numbers follow the FOIL method. If we multiply a plus bi with c plus ti and we use FOIL method, 
we start with the first terms making AC and then take the outer terms A and DI. That would make the half of the expression AC plus ADI. Then continue with the inner terms BI and C. Then end with the last terms BI and DI. The last term can be taken as B and D with the square of I, which is equal to negative 1. Thus, making the other half of the expression as BCI minus BD. Placing all terms together, we get AC plus ADI plus BCI minus BD. Place all real numbers together, those without I together, then factor out I from the remaining terms so the product of the two complex numbers turns out as AC minus BD plus the quantity of AD and BC multiplied by I. A couple of examples to show the operation is presented starting with 2 plus 3I times 1 minus 4I. If we use FOIL method, we start with the first terms 2 and 1. The outer terms are multiplied as 2 times negative 4i. Then inner terms are multiplied as 3i times 1. Then the last terms, when multiplied, show 3i times negative 4i. Simplify the four terms as 2 minus 8i plus 3i minus 12i squared, where i squared is negative 1, making the whole expression 2 minus 8i plus 3i plus 12 again reduced as 14 minus 5i. The second example has negative 1 plus the root of 3 times i multiplied by 1 plus the root of 20 times i. Start with the first terms negative 1 times 1, then outer terms negative 1 times root of 20 times i, plus inner terms root of 3 times i with 1. Then last terms multiply the root of 3 times i with the root of 20 times i. Simplify the solution into negative 1 minus root of 20 times i plus root of 3 times i. Then combine the root of 3 times the root of 20 with i squared. With i squared converted as negative 1 and combine root of 3 and root of 20, the expression then becomes negative 1 minus root of 4 times 5 to account for 20 multiplied by i plus root of 3 times i minus the root of 60. Extract the perfect square from the second term and expand root of 60 into 4 times 15. Then combine similar terms to get the product of the complex numbers as the negative of the quantity 1 plus 2 root of 15 minus the quantity of 2 root of 5 minus root of 3, multiplied by i. The last basic operation is division of complex numbers. With this operation, the solution involves multiplying the ratio by the conjugate of the denominator or the divisor. The numerator will be solved using the FOIL method again. AC plus BD plus i times the quantity of bc minus ad. Using the conjugate, the denominator becomes the difference of two squares, c squared minus di squared. di squared can then be expanded into d squared times i squared, which is negative 1. So the new denominator is then taken as c squared plus d squared. When we take the answer in the format of a complex number, the answer is taken as the real number AC plus BD over C squared plus D squared, and the imaginary number is in the form I times BC minus AD over C squared plus D squared. An example of division of complex numbers is shown with 3 plus 2Y divided by 4 plus I. By using the long formula, take A as 3, B as 2, C is 4 and D is 1. Having known these variables, the equation turns as 3 times 4 plus 2 times 1 over 4 squared plus 1 squared plus I with 2 times 4 minus 3 times 1 
over 4 squared plus 1 squared. Simplifying the expression, the final quotient is 14 over 17 plus 5i over 17. With the long method using conjugate, the multiplier conjugate is 4 minus i, making the solution 3 times 4 plus 3 times negative i plus 2i times 4 plus 2i times negative i, all over 4 squared minus i squared, which is taken as negative 1. The long numerator can be reduced to 12 minus 3i plus 8i minus 2i squared all over 16 plus 1. Separating the real number from the imaginary, the quotient is 14 over 17 plus 5i over 17. Similar with what was solved using the formula. A little longer but one doesn't need to memorize a long formula. Thank you.